Hello everyone, uh, this is the chapter balancing. So in the theory of machine books, uh, it will be on the chapter 21 and 22. The first chapter will be the balancing of rotating masses. And then the other one is the balancing of the reciprocating masses. So there are two main parts of this chapter. For the introduction in this chapter, if you consider an object of mass m with a distance r from a certain uh, axis rotation any kind of motion from the mass will produce a centripetal force because of the changing of the direction so this one will cause the disturbing force on the axis of rotation means that you have force is equivalent to ma so the centrifugal force remains in balance as long as the center of mass lies on the axis of rotation. If the force is not unbalanced, then force is produced. Basically, this one is related for from uh, related to equation of equilibrium where total force, moment, and so on will be equivalent to zero.
So balancing is actually the process attempting to improve mass distribution of a body so that it will rotate on its bearing without unbalanced centrifugal force. Similar as you uh, see in the balancing of tire where you can add masses or you can remove masses from the tire rim. So common approach would be adding or removal, removal of mass from the system. There are two basic types of unbalance, rotating unbalance and reciprocating unbalance. The main two objectives in this balancing chapter is how to solve the problem in the single plane and also multi-plane. So single plane will be static balancing, multi-plane will be dynamic balancing. Static plane means that any kind of force movement is in one plane only, are in one plane only. Multi-plane, you have several axes. So you need to have a reference axis. In static balance, so you have to consider moment because you have masses and then you have distance R. So the masses will move in circular motion from the distance R from the point of rotation. So in this case, the total moment should be equivalent to zero. So summation of mass times R, okay, R is distance, should be equivalent to zero. As for the dynamic balancing, however, you have to consider multiple plane, which is include XY plane, XZ plane, and YZ plane, for example. So the sum of the centrifugal force must be equivalent to zero. Originally, F is equivalent to MA, mass times acceleration, but in this case, in the body uh, rotation of a body mass should be related with the angular acceleration, omega. Okay, so the equation for the acceleration, linear acceleration, A, should be equivalent to omega power of 2 times R, where R is the radius of the rotating rotation so since omega is constant the above equation can be simplified into summation of m times r is equivalent to zero the condition of this equation is also the condition the static balance so when the body is dynamically balanced it's also statically balanced but is if a body is statically balanced it may not be dynamically balanced. So there are two things, different things. Huh? To solve static balancing, you can either use analytical method, in other words, equation of equilibrium, or any kind of force, it must be equivalent to zero. And also, you have to consider the graphical method where you have to use your ge geometrical set, including uh, protector and also ruler and so on. Lah. 
So in this case, for the analytical method, you have to consider, for example, here in the space diagram, you have uh, at least five masses, and then each five masses have its own masses, M1, M2, M3, M4, and so on. And then also you have to consider the distance of the each masses from the point of rotation. So in this case, because this one is actually rotation on the same plane, you have to consider the angle in respective axis. So in this case, the reference axis will be x axis. So you have to consider axis from x axis. So for example, uh, for object number one, the mass is m1, the r1 is the distance from the point of rotation. And then the angle for this one in refer to x axis should be equivalent to theta 1. So of course in this case you have to uh, remember back the static chapter where you can use back this force times direction. Okay, in, the, in this case the direction will be the uh, x axis or y axis component and so on. Uh. You have to put, remember back this one. So in this case you can use m times r1 m1 times r1 times the omega power of 2 so r uh, omega power of 2 times r is equivalent to a which is the acceleration so once you use this equation then you sum up all the mass times acceleration value for each masses for each object then you sum up this equation to be equivalent to zero. So basically you are doing all these things equivalent into zero. So you can do the uh, equation and then of course you have to consider cosine theta and sine theta where you can get the tangent theta C. So that one is considered as the resultant angle and as well as you can calculate the resultant force so that resultant force is actually the force required to balance up all of those four masses and then also you can consider you can also calculate the angle in refer to axis in this case for the graphical method from the space diagram in the figure on the left Okay, you have to make sure you know the masses and its respective distance from the center of rotation as well as the angle. Okay, angle of each mass in refer to x axis. In this case, you have to determine whether you want to use x axis as a reference axis or you can use y axis as a reference axis. So, in order for you to draw the vector diagram at the right figure you start from a so object number one will be m1 with force fc1 is moving towards from a to b and then you have to draw it precisely whenever you have the angle for example theta one is equivalent to 30 degrees so you have to draw from a to b lines 30 degrees from x axis and then you continue to draw the object number two for the forces from forces from B to C. So this one will be uh, totally vertical 90 degrees and then towards C to D and D to E. So the remaining over there from E to A should be the resultant force. So resultant force is FC from A towards E. So from A, B, C, D, E is the force with the with its respective angle and then fc will be the counter force towards the other three forces or five forces over there so if you have the closing vector so this one is considered as balance so its direction
the example problem for the static balancing as shown in example 1.1 .1. okay so you see over here a circular disc mounted on a shaft carries three attached masses 4 kg 3 kg and 2.5 kg at radial distance of 75 85 and 50 mm and the angular position of each uh, masses will be 45 degrees 135 and 240 degrees respectively so over here you must jot down all the mass value m1 is equivalent to 4 kilo and then m2 is 3 kilo m3 is 2.5 kilo and then of course you should uh, write down the radial distance which is r1 r2 r3 okay which is 75 mm 85 and 50 mm and then also you must jot down the angle corresponding angle for the each masses which is theta 1 to 3 and then all of this one since this one is the static balancing so you have to calculate moment almost moment like the moment like m uh, multiplied by r so m1 uh, times r1 will be 4 times 75 which is equivalent to 300 kilogram and dot mm so you must calculate like this Next, you go for the equation of equilibrium where you understand that the total number of force or total summation of force which is F is equivalent to MA which is equivalent to 0 and A which is replaced by omega power of 2 R. So you remove omega power of 2 and then you can get uh, M times R. So M times R the summation will be equivalent to 0 and then which added with the resultant force. Okay. Originally, resultant force so it should be mc times omega power of 2 rc so you remove the omega power of 2 and then this one will be equation of equilibrium so you need to balance it into zero so over here since this one is in xy plane so you should have cosine theta and sine theta so you can get the x axis and y axis component so over here probably i don't write it over here so you need to change into fx is equivalent to 0 fy is equivalent to 0 then over there you have sine and cosine so over here you should having all the mcrc which is equivalent to square root okay square root all the value of the 300 cosine 45 divided by and so on divided by the 300 sine 45 and so on so over here should get value okay so the m times mc times rc okay should be equivalent to 285.8 kilogram mm then you can get the mass okay the mass of the counter mass ah. and then from the cosine and ten, uh, cosine and sine theta c so you can get tangent theta c where you divided with the value okay sine theta and cosine theta then you can get negative 9.26 so over here you a tangent back inverted tangent so you can get theta c which is equivalent to minus 83 degrees 50 minutes so over here you should use this value or either you can get uh, 83 point something something ah. okay so over here you can get the theta c theta c which is the corresponding or the uh, the counter angle for the masses so that this masses with the angle can neg neg uh, neg negotiate not negotiate is actually negate the value of the uh, force accumulation with these three masses over here instead of analytical method so you can use graphical method only over here i must remind you that you must use protector and also you must use the geometrical set to draw the vector diagram over here the vector diagram must be in force vector since you already calculate force vector or m times r so the kilogram mm unit will be the 
value that you use to draw this vector diagram. Over here, you start from point O, which is point origin, and then the 300 kilogram mm, okay, for the first value, m1 uh, times r1, okay, and then you should draw according to x axis as a reference, so you must draw 45 degrees from x axis counterclockwise, okay, so counterclockwise from x axis, and then you can draw another point from point A, okay, from point O to point A. So the second point start with the M2 times R2, which is 255 kilogram mm towards a certain angle over there, okay, so, uh, angle given previously, and so on. So you draw the, all the angles and then up to point C, the final point, and then you just draw the dash line towards the origin point. So over here, you have the close loop of the vector diagram so over here you use the, your protector okay use your protector to determine the angle of the uh, counter masses as as well as it's uh, the angle from the origin point so over here you have mcrc which is the uh, uh, force vector which is the counter force to counter all these three forces previously so over here, you should having the distance. Actually, you can calculate distance over here because you can use the scale. For example, 300 kilogram mm, you can write down or you can draw the line as long as the, for example, 330 mm. For the 20, uh, 255 kg mm, you can draw 25.5 mm and so on. So over here from C to point origin O, you can actually calculate the distance which is 75 mm. Okay, then over here you have the angle and so on. So you can calculate, okay, you can calculate the counter masses which is 3.81 kilogram. Okay, same as the uh, previous uh, value in the analytical method. So as well as the angle also, you can calculate or you can use the protector. So given over here, you have 96 degrees from the minus x axis, 96 degrees, plus 180, the, uh, the positive, uh, the, the upper value. So 180 plus 96 degrees will be 276 degrees counterclockwise from x axis. Over here for the dynamic balancing, you have the several mass, okay, which is rotating in different planes. For example, in three-dimensional x, y, z, you have three planes, which is x, y, y, z, and x, z. Okay, so that you can form up all the balance and couple. For dynamic balancing, for example, if you have three mass, then you have to use M1, M2, Mn3, okay, which is revolving with a re uniform angular velocity omega attached to rotor at radii R1, R2, and R3. So this one R1, R2, and R3 is the radius for the rotation for each masses in respective plane. And then you have a different three planes which distance L1, L2 and L3 from reference plane. So need to remind you that over here instead of you use X, Y, for example, X exists as a plane. So you need to use reference plane, reference plane at O. And then you have to calculate the distance from each of the masses towards to the plane 
or towards the point O. Okay, usually the centrifugal force is equivalent to F is equivalent to MA, where M is equivalent uh, where the force is equivalent to m times omega power of 2r so omega power of 2r which is equivalent to the acceleration so over here compared to the static balancing over here you must use the couple acting parallel to the respective force vector which is you must calculate the force times the distance l Okay, distance L is the distance between the masses towards a reference plane at O. So over here, you should have F is equivalent to M times R times omega power of 2 times L. So the equation itself is similar form as the previous static balancing where you must have the equation of equilibrium where the total force will be equivalent to 0. But over here, you must use also the another equation, which is the couple equation, where the, you use m times r times omega power of 2l. So, you sum up all this one, which is should be equivalent to 0. But if the resultant force and couple are not 0, so this the system is not Okay, over here, instead of three masses, you should start with the two masses of in two planes so that you can get the counter masses. Okay, this one is similar if you use back the fundamental that we can already learn in the static chapter where you have, uh, for example, four different forces and then you need to combine two forces each other and then you can for example, from four force, you can combine two force and two another two force so that you can get the uh, the resultant two force MR1 and MR2. So over here is still the same fundamental so that you use back the F is equivalent to MA equation which is equivalent to zero. So you use these two masses first, okay, to get the counter masses, okay, counter masses C1 and also counter masses C2. So C1 is actually from the this radial distance R C1. Okay, masses counter masses C M C2 is actually from uh, is at the R C2. So you sum up all the equation, remove the omega power of two, then you can get the sum of M times R plus M C1 R C1 plus mc2 rc2 is which is equivalent to zero then over here also you do the same thing but in, over here you use the couple equation which is f is 
equivalent to m times r times omega power of 2 times l. So, this one, uh, you use the similar principle as the previous equation and then just remove the omega power of the equation. Then you can get the summation of m times r times l plus mc2 rc2 times lc2. So, over here, you can break it into uh, components and then where you have break into components then you can get uh, in the components cosine theta and sine theta and so on okay so that you can get these two equation equation one and equation two okay the 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 last two equation over here you can use by this these two equation by square root this equation and also dividing this equation to get the tangent theta c2 and also the mc2 times rc2 times lc2 so over here is actually the force uh, which is related to the counter mass okay related to rc2 then after you get the value of mc2 and theta c2 okay solve the equation c and then after that, you can get the tangent theta C1. Okay, it's actually mathematical. So, please be careful with the cosine and the, uh, sine theta C1 and so on. Okay, here's some example for the complex cases where you have four masses revolving at respective axis. So, over here, you have four masses A, B, C, D and then which is each respective weight. Okay, each respective masses and then revolving at its respective uh, radius okay so you must jot down all the values ma is equal to 100 kg and so on and R radius which is ra is equal to 80 millimeter and so on so you must jot down this value and then of course the angle between these masses in respect if it's a rotating axis and so on so you can get theta a, theta B, and theta C, and theta D. So this one you need to jot down. For example, the angle between cranks measure anticlockwise are A to B. From A to B is 45 degrees. Okay. So at A should be 0, towards B should be 45 degrees, and then B to C, 70 degrees, which is 45 plus 70 degrees, and then from C to D, 120 degrees. So from a should be 115 plus 120 which is equal to 235 and then as I mentioned before in dynamic balancing you must use the uh, value from the distance between plane so you must use couple force times L which is couple so LA is the distance between A and X okay so between a and x so over here you have x and y axis so the, the balancing masses okay it is actually put in x axis and y axis respectively so you need to use two masses mx and my and then refer to two axis x axis and y axis so each axis and plane have a certain distance so you must jot down all the value between plane a and x 100 mm x and y is 400 mm between y and d is 200 mm and then the balancing masses revolve at 100 mm so radius for the masses okay either over here is mx and my both are 100 mm okay so you jot down all the values so over here need to remind you uh, for the static balancing, uh, you may don't have to use the table, but over here for the dynamic balancing, you must use table so that uh, all the information in the questions in the problem are jot down and also all the values so that you can calculate couple in the same table. So the table will be in the next slide. Yeah.
Okay, here's the table that I want you to make if you get all the value, all the information from the problems previous in the previous slide. So you, the first column will be plain. So you have originally you have A, B, C, D, and then the X, Y, which is the counterbalance, which is the balance masses. So you must choose either X axis or Y axis to be the reference plane. So over here you can choose X axis as the reference plane, RP. Okay, the one at the X axis will be RP, reference plane. And then the next column with the mat, which is the mass. Okay, so the mass that you don't know is the mass at X axis. Okay, X axis or X plane. And also mass at Y plane. The next column will be the radius. Okay, so radius is up to you whether you want to change into millimeter or meter. Okay, but in this case, you can choose to use in meter. And then, and then you have another column which is the centrifugal force. Okay, centrifugal force which is the omega power of two. Okay. Centrifugal force divided omega power of 2. I okay, need to remind you that originally the equation will be F is equivalent to M times omega power of 2 R. So over here, you need to remove the omega power of 2. So that's why over here, centrifugal force divided by omega 2. Then you can get M times R in kilogram meter. So you calculate all the value from masses from the second column to, to the radius, which is the, the second column. And then also you must... Uh, you must jot down all the value from the distance between planes. So over here, x-axis or x-plane is the reference plane. So from x-plane will be L, okay, L, A will be minus 0 0.1. And then you jot down. Of course, if you choose x-axis as a reference plane, so this one should be equivalent to 0, okay, x, at x-plane. Eh? So over here, the last column, which is the sixth column, will be the couple divided by omega power of power of 2. So you can get M times R times L. Okay. So if you want to write down the table, so the first one is plane. Okay. Plane axis. Huh? Okay. The second one is masses, kilogram, radius, R, which is in meter, centrifugal force divided by omega power of 2. Or you can write down M times R. And then another one, the fifth column, which is plane times L. Okay. The sixth column, which is the couple divided by omega power of 2. Or you can use M times R times L as the label. Okay. So for the couple divided by omega power of 2, so you write down M times R times L for each value, for each masses. So over here, all... All you can get is minus uh, 1.6, X plane is 0, B plane is 4.2, and so on. So you get all the value. You can also draw the position plane. Okay, so this position plane help you to understand what are the masses distance. Eh? Okay, masses distance. So you have to determine the position of planes. Okay, if you do not sure. Uh, the distance between planes, you can write down the position of plane first, then you can write down the table, or you can write down the table, then you can write down the position of plane. So the position of plane is depending on the reference plane, which is the X plane, and then towards A, B, C, Y, D plane. So this one you have the distance. Then after that, you can draw the angular position of masses. Need to remind you over here, you use point O as point of rotation of all these masses. And then you use A as the starting point. Mass A as the starting point, which is 200 kilogram. And then have a distance 80. So over here, you can use your ruler to write down, for example, here 80, which is equivalent to 4 centimeter and so on. So you must draw according to the scale. So over here, another one B, which is 300 kilogram, having a distance 70, okay, 70 mm originally. But in this case, 
you must use the scale okay whether you can use 3.5 uh, centimeter and so on but between a and b rotation plane you can have 45 degrees angle so you must use this angle to draw the angular position of the masses so as well for the c masses and then d masses as for the x axis and y axis or x plane or y plane uh, masses so you just draw down over here okay so this one you have the distance already given between x towards point of o okay mx is unknown and then another one which is my okay my that you don't know and then the distance also you don't know okay with the angle theta y also that you don't know okay so from here after you draw this angular position of masses and then position planes then you can use back this value to draw the vector diagram and so on over here for the analytical method to solve this problem you can refer back to the table where you have the force column and the six column the force column is the centrifugal force divided by omega power of 2 you add all of this value from all plane a b c d x y plane all this equation plus all this value and then all this value which is equivalent to zero and then same of course with the couple so you have couple divided by omega power of 2 which is equivalent to m times r times l you add all those value for each axis respectively and then sum it up into equivalent of zero so the couple which which is equivalent to zero then you use back these two equation okay these two equation solve these two equation to, so that you can get the masses uh, at y plane and also x plane so over here in this slide you can see that this one you can solve the y plane first so you can square root okay you can divide it, it first square root this equation and then you can get the value for the masses at y plane which is 184 kilogram so in the square root need to remind you over here all this value need to be square root and then use back this sine and cosine angle and so on with these two equation so you divide sine theta and cosine theta so that you can get tangent theta y and then you can get the angle for the masses y for the mass y so after you get this one you should have the angle will be 347 degrees 12 minutes okay so of course you can choose to use in graphical method okay same as previous in the uh, the previous example so you, you need to draw all the lines starting from point o and then towards point a and then point b and c and so on towards the final point then you draw accurately using ruler as well as protector as well as you use the geometrical set then you can use scale to scale down the distance for example 100 to 10 mm okay 100 100 mm to 10 mm and so on so after that you can get the value from the graphical method okay so that one you don't need to use the calculation to, to, to determine the distance so you can directly calculate for example masses also you can calculate from that one so in this case if you use the value uh, get uh, that you get from the uh, vector diagram okay graphical method so the distance which is represent m times r times l so you can use these two graphical method one is the masses one is the couple so you need to use two vector diagram okay instead of one previously only one okay Statical balancing, you use only one, which is the vector, force vector diagram. Over here, you must use force vector diagram and then another one, cover vector diagram. 
so that you can get the distance m and then the, the distance couple okay After you solve the y plane mass and angle, you can directly solve using the similar equation. You see the same equation to get the mass and angle at x plane. Okay. So the details is similar. In balancing reciprocating mass, it's actually similar as the previous static and dynamic balancing, but it is actually different chapter, a whole chapter different in the textbook. Okay, but in these courses, we only touch a bit about the balancing reciprocating mass. Say, for example, over here, you must use the link between a, B, and O. So over here you have three link. One, two, three. So over here, the initial force of crankshaft resulted in force F12 acting on the main bearing at zero or O. This force F12 have vertical forces and then horizontal forces. Okay, the F12 horizontal is unbalanced shaking force. The vertical F12V and F41 balance each other but unbalanced shaking couple. So the shaking couple is different thing. Ah. The magnitude and the direction of this force and couple changes with the rotation of crank angle theta. So as I know, as you all know, over here, the crankshaft movement, okay, for example, OA link is actually rotating at speed omega, okay, angular velocity omega. So the rotation of link OA is actually moving the masses, okay, the masses at B, okay, surface B. Actually, this one will be the, the piston and so on. Ah. But in moving this one, you have to balance up this, this movement where you have the balancing force at surface of B, which is the F41. And then another one, the force at 0 or force at point O, which is F12. So this force is actually the reaction force, actually the reaction force so that you can counterbalance over here. So the magnitude, the direction of this force couple changes with the rotation of crank angle theta and then the shaking force cause vibration in horizontal direction and the shaking couple produce oscillation vibration. Okay, these two producing two type of vibration. The first one which is the horizontal direction shaking force okay, at the surface B. And then also the oscillation vibration at O.
Yes, this this diagram is actually two dimensional x y axis. So you just use the centripetal force. So centripetal force, which is F, is equivalent to m a, which is equivalent to m times omega power of two r. And then of course you have to relate with the diagram angle and so on uh, for each link. So you have you can divide into two components which is component x axis and y axis or horizontal components and uh, vertical component. So regular approach to balance the shaking force in by adding counter mass m at radius r opposite the crank so you must add masses at m at radius r okay opposing the crank so the balance the pri primary force but resulting in unbalanced vertical components and then it will be compromised to have to meet by the adding only fraction of reciprocating masses c so masses c is the reciprocating the one on the surface B. So, for the primary force balanced by the mass, which is equivalent to C M R omega power of two cosine theta. So mass C, okay, mass C. And then primary force unbalanced by the mass one minus C. And then the vertical components of the centrifugal force which remain unbalanced which is equivalent to C times M times R times omega power of 2 sine theta. Okay, you add up all this equation, you use square root so that you can get the unbalanced force is minimum when, when C is equivalent to 1 over 2 or half. Example 2.1 is the example problem for the reciprocating mass balancing where you have mass of reciprocating parts of 40 kg and then mass of revolving parts 30 kg at crank radius speed is 150 rpm stroke is 350 mm and then if 60% of the reciprocating parts and all the revolving parts are to be balanced means that all the mass of reciprocating plus the revolving parts okay 60% from the reciprocating part which is 60% of 40 kg plus 30 kg are required at radius of 320 so you need to find out the balance mass and then the second question is to find the unbalanced force when the crank has turned 45 degrees from top dead center. Whenever this crank is changed towards a certain angle, so the you have the unbalancing, such as mentioned in the previous slide. So you jot down all the value. M is equivalent to 40 kilogram, and then the for the mass for the revolving parts MP, which is 30, 30 kilogram, and then the speed, which is 150 m, uh, rpm. And then the ready, which is radius, which is uh, L over 2, which is equivalent to 175 mm. So this one, which is related to the previous slide, how to get the R is equivalent to L over 2. And then over here, you can calculate the angular velocity. Okay, angular velocity. So you have the 100 RPM, you need to change into radian per second. So the, the angular velocity omega which is equal to 15.7 radian per second. And then to solve the question, uh, question number one, mass to be balanced at crank pin. So over here, you have the reciprocating mass which is 30 kilo. And then you have the reciprocating parts. So you have the reciprocating part 40 kilo times 60% plus 30 kilogram of the revolving parts. So it equivalent to 55, uh, 54 kilogram. Then we use the equation of equilibrium where you can get force is equivalent to zero. 
So the counter mass MC, okay, balance mass MC, which is we don't know. RC is already given, so the radius is 320 mm, and then equivalent to MR, okay. MR is the mass 45, uh, 54 kilogram times radius 175 mm. Then you can get the balance mass or counter mass, which is MC is equal to 29.53 kilogram. So the ambient force at 45 degrees. So you need to use the previous slide equation. So you need to use this these two equation. Insert the theta is equivalent to 45 degrees and then all the value related Okay, in this equation, then you can get the final answer will be 880.1 meter
over here you can try to solve this simple example okay so already included with the uh, answers for question number one two and three so that's all for now thank you very much